Hello and welcome back, I'm Demis Helen and we're looking at the second episode of this series where we're going to look at the pattern editor and how we can use different step lengths to create different patterns and how we can use all the different things that come with the pattern editor such as the Euclidean mode, the randomizer, we've got some settings at the bottom of the screen for velocity control, uh, repeating notes in one place so you can create unique and interesting patterns within the pattern editor and then there's other global features that I'll show you in there as well. So let's jump in and take a look. So here we are in Cubase and we're going to be looking at the pattern editor in this episode. So I've designed a new drum machine. So we've got, if we just bring this out of hiding from the bottom, you can see we've got a new kick drum, a clap, an open hat, and then two closed hats, just so I can demonstrate some of the features of the pattern editor. So you can just continue if you're following along at home using the first drum machine and just add your sounds in and make your sounds so you can follow along. I'm just using a separate track so it keeps everything separate from the previous episode. So having a look in the pattern editor, we're presented with a grid system and you can see that we've just got five channels on here, which I just said is the kick clap and the hats. And you can see each one has got a different length of pattern. And I'm going to show you why I've done that and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to use some of the features here down at the bottom, including velocity, probability, variance, gate. There's all different items that we can use here for our creativity. So as a quick overview of this, we are going to start by creating a new pattern. So here at the top, new pattern, and then you can see we've now got pattern three, but we do have to jump back into the arranger window and you can see here a little drop down menu on the corner of our pattern clip. We need to select three and that will give us our blank pattern that we've just created in here. So make sure you change it there because you will get the previous pattern playing. Now, we can create a nice simple pattern like a four to the floor kick. So all very familiar and that's just one bar of time. That's 16 steps in 16th notes. That's one single bar. I'm going to go ahead and remove them and leave the kick. Let's just say every four bars we want this. but you can see it's just playing every single time. It's not omitting that note for the first three and then adding it in. So what we can do here is if you look at these controls on the left-hand side, we can hot swap between different sounds. So if you wanted to change that to a clap, you can do, but we're gonna keep it as a kick. So it just gives you that flexibility. And then you can see across here, we have our number of steps, the time resolution. So is it in 16, is it in 30 second notes? So you can control the speed of that particular pattern the direction, backwards, forwards, and alternating. So it'll just sort of ping pong back and forth if you choose alternating, and then a random generator. So if we just use the clap here, it'll randomly generate every time you click it, a random pattern. So I'm gonna show you now that we want to make a four bar section in here. So we've got the time base and the steps. We want 16 but we're gonna choose different number of steps. So if we choose 32, that's gonna double its length. So as you've guessed, we want 64 for this demonstration. And we can then just draw in on the start of each beat as indicated by the color change, like that. And then we can have our double beat at the end. So we've got that sort of two eighth notes hitting for that final bit. So if we just go back to the beginning, you can see it continues playing now. and we've got that. So one, two, three, and four bars. In fact, we are incorrect there. Let's just move across. See, it was just off screen there. So moving that across, our double beat goes there at the very end, 64 steps. Just make sure you've got that, it is hidden. Um, I'm just working on a smaller area with the screen there for this recording. So we get that option then to add a little variance at the end and we can even do stuff like that. Let's just skip it to the end. So that we can do variances. Now, some of the controls here at the bottom are very simple, like the velocities, we can control that. So I'm gonna make them like half volume so they're not as impactful. And if we listen from here again, Now we can control the levels of those kicks. We've now got the clap. 
Now the clap in this, I just want it to be exactly the same, just on the second of each beat hit. Then the open hat. Again, this is going to be a very simple offbeat open hat, so we're going to throw them in the middle. Now, if you wanted to make a variance in that, we could extend them. So let's just say we want these to be double the length and we can have the off beats like that. And let's just say we want a second one, but I'm going to use the velocity and bring that halfway down so it's a bit quieter. Let's just get this in time. Have we got, ah, we've got 35 there. We want 32. So it makes it sound like we've opened the release there and let the hat drift along a little bit. So you can get really creative with stuff like that. Then with the closed hats, I'm just going to say I want these on a cycle of four steps. So I'm going to select four for both like this. And we can say one could be half the speed. So we've got eighth notes. And the other one could be sixteenths. And that way we create accenting on those notes. So that's an, a nice little touch that we can do there, but I'm going to select 16 again and I'm going to make them rolling. So you might be asking the question, why are we using the two different hat channels doing exactly the same thing? And it's because I'm going to show you how to use the sections down here. So we're going to use the repeats, the probability, variance. We can even offset them so they're not in time and also gate them as well. So, so each channel, before we get started, can have swings. So we could choose this hat to have more swing using this control over here. And then we can offset it as well here and just shift it around a little bit so it's not perfectly in time so it gives you the Haas effect for example. Also we can use a global swing here at the top so it'll swing the entire pattern to the same swing level but you can also control that on a track level so you can get different swing variances in those. So let's have a listen to this first hat. And we've got a bit of swing and that's based on a 16th pattern. We can go up to the top and swing the entire pattern. Which you can hear does exactly the same thing, but now the whole pattern is swung. So everything's on beat at the moment, but let's just say them claps, they had a little off clap like this. Going back to these hats, this first one, I want to have variances in. So this second one is sort of going to play a standard roll in 16th pattern. We're going to keep it as that. But the second one, or should we say the first one, is going to have some variances. So I'm going to start with velocity, and I'm going to make a nice little ramp up like this. So something very standard. And that helps to control the groove. And then we can use all these other ones. So it repeats, adds repetitions to those notes. So if we choose, say, four for this one, it's going to play four notes. So for example, if you wanted to set this to eighth notes, if you double that up, it'll become a sixteenth just for that one note, and it'll give you that sort of galloping feel. And with that, we can then jump into the offset and we can select certain notes to be offset. So it's creating your own swing, but at the same time, you can create the Haas effect using two on top of each other and sort of just separating them at a separate value. Another thing that we can do here is use the probability. So this is where it comes in. We've got this rolling hat here, just going round in circles. And then we've got this one with just a little bit of a trill in there. 
And then what we can do with the probability of this is we can say we want certain notes to trigger sometimes, but not other times. And it's going to pick it at random. So that is the true meaning of this probability. It's like a randomizer. So I'm going to bring down the probability of the off beats and maybe this one here. I'm just picking random values. And if we listen to that in isolation. So can you see that little repetition that we have here from the repeat sections not happening every time now? We have the velocity variance, so we can vary how the velocities act. So in fact, it's going to be better showing you on this one. So we're going to say the two last ones, 100%. You can see you can create unique patterns that way as well. And I'd be definitely encourage you to try and use those variances to just create a little bit more humanization in there. And that's what this pattern editor can do. And then finally, to show you how the gate works, we can use the rolling hat here. So you can get really nitty and gritty without having to go back in and shorten the sample down or use a different drum pad to create that shorter note. We can just use the gator here to bring that into effect. So you can see we've got loads of useful tools in the pattern editor. And at first it may look daunting, but it is a very useful and easy to use tool. And you can see there now we've got pattern three loaded in. And if we listen to that all in context, including our little drum roll at the end there. And let's just say on here, we want this next section to have a slight variance to, let's say, introduce a new section. So we can go over here, we can double click on the pattern editor and we can say up here, duplicate this pattern, which will then create pattern four, as you can see here, jump back to the arranger, change that to pattern four, when you jump back in, we can add something different in there. So for example, with this open hat, we could have two sections of the open hat um, doing that velocity dip. And let's just say this last one, we want that last hat a little bit more gated like that. So it's a bit shorter. So it doesn't make too much sense because we've got that second open hat there. But you can see now we've created a variance with exactly the same pattern and we can switch between the two. So we've got pattern three here, pattern four there. And you may want to introduce something else like another element to fit in with that pattern. And that is how easy it is to use the pattern editor. And just before we finish up, there's a little bonus tip here. We have the Euclidean and randomized controls here. So under Euclidean, we have the pulses, the rotation, and under randomized, we have the density and the dice for randomizing the pattern. So let's just take a look at what these do. So if we wanted a four to the floor kick, we'd set the pulses to four. And it's just evenly distributing across the grid that we have set, which is 16 over one bar. Let's go to the open hat, or the closed hat, sorry. And we're going to use the Euclidean, and I'm going to turn this up to, let's say, five pulses. And then the rotation here can shift these 1 16th at a time across the grid. So if we shift it to one, you can see it shifted all of them to the left, to the right, should we say. So that's what they do. And we can have a little bit of global shift as well for that. And let's say on the second one, we want some randomized patterns on here. So we can click randomization, keep the density at full, and then just hit the dice. And you can see it's going to generate a different pattern every time. And it's even going to give you velocity variances as well.
can see then using all of the other tools available, this is gonna give you some truly unique patterns in there. And of course, you can also choose the randomize here as well to randomize the steps that way. So there's many ways that you can come up with patterns that are happy accidents and just give your track a different feel where you not necessarily would have created that pattern just by drawing them in. So it just leaves it to a chance. And sometimes that's the best way of creating music in my opinion, because I use this a lot now. So that is the pattern editor. Hopefully I've covered everything in there for you to create your own patterns in there and really get in depth with Cubase 4 new drum machine and pattern editor. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Demis Helen and I will see you all in the final episode where we're going to be looking at the modulators. So thanks for watching. See you there.